next week we're going to have a little go through or I'll do a work through of this problem using seven and serum with two sources. So I'm going to do that up front and then we're going to do the Norton serum after that. Okay. So problem says find the current I3 and the power dissipated in the 30 ohm resistor using seven and serum. Okay, so what's the first thing we need to do in the process? Take out the resistor of interest. So take take the 30 ohm resistor out of the circuit and leave two open terminals. So we've got that on the next page. So here's, in this particular problem, here's our two terminals I and B that are mentioned in the Thevenin's process. And this open circuit voltage here is equal to the little V Thevenin's that we're looking to find for our equivalent circuit. Okay. I want to try and um, encourage the drawing of circuit diagrams of each part of the process as you go along because that's the best way to get this right okay um, so where do we go from there guys move one of the sources. Yep. So what we need to do is take one of these sources out and replace it with. I'm going to do this because that's easiest for me. So that's gone. What do we replace it with? Why short circuit, Catherine? You're right, but why? No, nope. not because it's DC, no. Nope. Because it's a voltage supply and a short circuit is the... Anyone can answer? Resistance. Resistance of an ideal volley source. Yep, that that volley source sitting there on its own, that battery is considered to be ideal. Therefore, it's got zero resistance. So when you take it out, you've got to replace it with that ideal resistance, which is zero ohms, a short circuit. Okay? And any question on using these processes. In the exam, we're going to require you to make some statements about that knowledge, about the process. Okay, and you'll be given marks appropriate to how much of it you get right. Okay? So we put that short circuit in. What have we then got? We then, we've been tending to call this, for instance, circuit A, haven't we? So let's do that. And we're going to use what method to find out what that voltage is there. What are we doing here in terms of method? We're using superposition. So we're going to put current hours on for that source. Because the middle is open circuit, there is only one current. Yeah. I A. Current for circuit A. How do we calculate that? Yeah. I A is equal to V one over R T. We might as well do this all in one go on here. That's that easy. It's not a particularly difficult 
calculation of the total resistance. So we go 12 volts divided by 6 plus 5 equals. One point zero nine amperes. Yep. Now, what will that enable us to calculate? What will drop where, Catherine? Yeah. So currents going that way. So that volt drop is that way. We could also calculate, call that VR1. We could also calculate current going that way, voltage arrow that way, VR2. Everyone agree with that? Yeah? So we can calculate either or both of those two volt drops. So let's go initially for VR1. equal to I A times R1 1.09 times the 6 ohms equals 1.5 6.51, sorry. Six point five one volts. Yeah. Agreed or not? Five four. How does that help us find VOC? Yep, because here's a Kirchhoff voltage law loop. We've got two anti-clockwise arrows, one of them zero, and one, so we can say VOC plus VR1 is equal to V1 by Kirchhoff's voltage law. Yep. Therefore, VOC is equal to V1 minus VR1. That is... 12 minus 6.54 equals 12.54. Can anyone see how we could have done this quicker than this? Deliberately gone this way to show you how you could end up doing more work we actually need to do. No? I'm saying you could have stopped there and done what? This way, you're going to do this bit twice, once for circuit A and once for circuit B. All that's happening here is one current flowing around the outside due to this source, one current flowing due to that source. Put them two currents onto the one circuit, the original circuit with both sources in, and combine them. Then use that current to find the two volt drops. This way you're, doing, you're going to end up with the same result, but you're doing a lot more work. And I thought I'd just show that make sure you're aware. Okay? 
So we're going to cut across now to circuit B. There's circuit A. This one's going to be circuit B. And we're going to get rid of this voltage source now and replace that with its ideal resistance, which is a short circuit. Now what we've got is one current, IB, in that direction, meaning there's a volt drop that way there if we wanted it, and there's a volt drop that way there if we needed that too. Okay, but if we calculate that one current, just like we did before, IB is equal to V2 of RT, that's 10 over 11 equals, sorry, 0.9 amperes. Okay. Now, if we go back to our complete circuit, this is 0 0.9 amps, I, IB, IA with 1 point oh nine amps. I, the total current flow in there, is 1.09 minus 0.9. They're in opposite directions, so they oppose each other, remember. Yeah. They really all put IA minus IB. because IA is big, which is 1.09 minus 0.9 equals 0.19 amps. So, the actual current flow, and I'm going to put that in red, IT is 0.19 amps. Now we can use that current to find the voltages, and then we'll do that process only once. See that? So, yes, there's more than one way to do it, but quite often there's a quick way, or a quicker way, and a way that involves more work. So now we can find current flowing this way, so VR1 is that way, current flowing down, so VR2 is that way. VR1 is IT times R1. 0.19 from 6 equals. Sorry? 1.14 volts. Therefore, by Kirchhoff's voltage law, which we've got a loop here, we'll use this one. One, two anti-clockwise arrows and one clockwise. So VOC plus VR1 is equal to V1. 
therefore VOC is V1 minus VR1 equals 12 minus 1.14 No, oh, hang on, we'll, we'll, no, 12, we're doing that loop, Lewis. Yeah? Yeah? What is 12 minus 1.14? How can we check that? How can we check it? Got over here. Another Kirchhoff's voltage law loop. Yeah, so should we not get the same value for VOC if we use that volt drop instead of that one? Check VR2 is equal to. I T times R two. That is point one nine, and R two is five ohms. That. Eh? Yeah. What did that come out to? Zero point nine five volts. By KVL, we've got one clockwise arrow, VOC, and two anti-clockwise arrows. So VOC is equal to V2 plus VR1. That's 10 plus 0.95. It was 10.95 volts, and allowing for errors in rounding and such like, certainly to one decimal place or three significant figures, they're the same. Yeah, you could also go all the way round the outside. They should add up, but we want it. We're interested in whether we got this one right, aren't we? Yeah. So VOC is 10.95 volts. All right. So the first part of our equivalent circuit be 10.95 volts. There's our load resistor. We now need to find RT, our little T. All right, just get a version of the diagram that will help us do that. Right, how do we find 
our little T. We've got this. Oh, hang on. We'd be better off with. Just pause this a minute. What are we interested in? What do we have to do? Yeah, the, what we're trying to find is, is, is the resistance measured here, but we've got to do something else first. What we've got to do with the voltage sources? Take them out and replace with their ideal internal resistance. Remove all sources voltage or current and replace them with their ideal resistance. In this case, a short circuit. Now, in terms of the two terminals A and B, what kind of resistance circuit have we got there as a total resistance? in parallel. Always look for, but bear in mind that an ohmmeter is going to supply a known voltage and it's going to measure the current flow and use that to convert it, use an ohm's law to a resistance. That's what an ohmmeter does. Yeah. So where's that current going to flow? It's going to flow up here, it can go that way or it can go that way. Therefore we have a parallel circuit. Yeah. If you get in a muddle with that, try redrawing it. You could take these terminals away and put them over to one side or the other. That would be like a, you'd normally imagine a circuit now. You've got to think, where is there a current path? And is it parallel? Is it series? Or is it a combination of both? Okay? So, half evidence is equal to R1, R2 over R1 plus R2 parallel equals 5 times 6 over 11 what does that come out to? 2.73 okay so now we can apply that current that resistance sorry to our original circuit and calculate the current flowing in the load IL. Simple as that. IL is equal to V thevenins over R thevenins plus RL 10.95 divided by 32.73 equals Not 0.33 of an amp. Okay, and then you could calculate power, whatever else you've been asked for. Yeah. So although it's a bit more tricky when there's two sources in there, because of that inbuilt superposition to find the effect of two voltage sources, it's not that much different. <laughs>